So once you guys come in, we are live right now. Just letting everybody know. Hey, Brian, we are definitely live. There we go. Yes. People are getting notices. Yep. Right. So I just, I just started it. Just I just I'm like yeah. yeah, yeah. Put some it's, good. it's good. It's good to go. start it okay. before we get officially going. Yep. So we're we're on now. We're actually live. live. And um. I just started it. Just I just I'm like yeah. Put some buttons. Okay. Now the only thing I want to double check is to make sure I, I have the right um. If we go back over here to um, my live stuff, the videos, so I make sure that I got the right um, the the chat. You know what I'm saying? Yep, yep, yep. If I click on live now, and I click on this. Videos. Okay, there we go. And I'm gonna click on this and do the pop out so I can see it. There we go. People are all coming in. Sweet. I'm working trail features is still a mod, so I didn't mess that up. Now we're cooking. look at that. Yes. All right. See that modern technology. Oh, what's up, Mr. Lone Ranger? All right. Go do a little modage over here with you too. I just posted it on my uh YouTube page. Thank Com you very much, Brian. Community tab. Finally, Gene. Yes. 609, 609 is not six o'clock. There we go. Yeah. It was like all of us waiting for Alexander's Patreon live stream uh, <laughs> last night. Holy moly. Well, we're learning because, I mean, like, like I said, I, I, I think what happened was I had it set as unlisted. Yeah, unlisted. And now it's all good. But I was I like, if I made it public, then it was, so, I don't know, I should we that. change the topic from technology to bikes to technology to YouTube? Because apparently I need more help with that. Right. I think you can change the title as you go, too. There's no da damage done. All right. All right, so look, we got a bunch of people on here. So let's go and do the official intro. I've got a script. I've got a script right here. All right, so one moment. Hello, folks. Welcome to another episode of the Off Camber Live Show. For anyone new to the program, the Off Camber Live Show has been put together by some great people that all run their own YouTube. Who wrote this? Right? Yeah, you like this? Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like Van Wick. I'm like a hostess. All right. Each week, the show will host on a different YouTube live stream. The speakers may change, and the topic is always about our favorite sport, mountain biking. Tonight's topic is going to be mountain bike tech. We're going to talk about uh, mountain bike computers, mountain bike apps. Um, bottom line, anything that has a light that blinks and has a button that charges you, like, like costs you money, we're going to try to talk about it. But before we do that, um, I like to have our other speakers introduce themselves. Uh, I'm just going to go from the left of the screen to the right to the screen. So it's then Brian, it's ride rate review, and then it's the crashing dad. It's just, I'm just going through the thing there. So Brian, go right ahead and you guys go. How is everybody doing tonight? I'm Brian from BKXC. I travel a lot. I ride the best trails in the world. That's, that's my gig. I'm glad to be here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> What's up, everyone? My name is Wayne. I ride mountain bike, and that's it. I have a YouTube channel. <laughs> and hi, guys. I'm Shane, the Crashing Dad. I just picked up mountain biking like a year and a half ago, and I tend to crash a lot. I like to, I like to shop for bikes, so I demo a lot of them, kind of give my opinions on them, and. Oh yeah, and I used to be a roadie, crazy tech roadie with the whole shebang. So awesome. that's why I'm here tonight. <laughs> nice. So um so oh, folks, got my spandex. No, 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 don't no, put that. Uh, uh, <laughs> like like Roman. So um so like I said, folks, um the reason why we put together this show is because it's a great way for different channels to get together and collaborate together. So if you haven't yet, please visit. I'll have links to all the descriptions to everybody, but you know, visit all the different channels and everything, and um, that kind of cool stuff. And we'll we'll uh, we'll uh, make wonderful things happen. Wait, oh, oh, wait! I just realized I have, I have to upload my custom overlay. Wait a minute. Uh -huh, yeah, because we, we switched out. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, wait, guys, look how cool this looks. Everybody, hold on. Upload overlay. Custom overlay button is on. Is nice. It, there it is. Yeah, it looks good. Ooh, right? You like that? You like my overlay? Yeah. Smash that like button. That's right. <laughs> I like my man over there. Smash that like button. Let's get some YouTube. Hey, speaking of YouTube, before we get into this real quick, um, folks, I want to just bring up something real fast. If you haven't heard about this yet, you probably have because we've been posting it all over Instagram. YouTube changed um, 
their numbers on what a YouTube channel is allowed to be monetized. What that means is um, we work our asses off, but unless you have a thousand subscribers and your channel generates over 4,000 hours of, of viewage, minutes being viewed, um, you're not allowed to monetize your site. Now, here's what that really means. Forget about the money part, because if you're not crossing those thresholds, you're probably not making a lot of money anyway. But what that means is it's basically smacking you guys in the face, saying that, you know, these guys work this hard, but your time is not valuable on their channels. And I think that's a bunch of bullshit because uh -huh. it's just not really right. Because again, whatever the money is, it's just the fact that it doesn't change the amount of work. So we've got some channels that we'll make sure that we list. Um, I, I know, I know uh, Jordan's one of those channels and we'll make sure we put everybody's channels in there. We'll, we'll mention everybody. So, cause besides doing this show as a, as a, as a, as a sign of all us channels supporting each other, we're actually all really good friends and we are really all supporting each other the best we can. So I'll make it aware, but don't want to go too far off the topic, but <laughs> that's kind of near and dear. And cause I just think that we all work so hard to not get that notice. Uh, it just kind of like a, a, a smack in the face, but anyway, um, so anyway, let's, let, let's talk about tech. So let, let's go right into it. So folks, real quick, I'm going to throw it out there. I am looking to go into the bike computer world this year. In fact, I uh, had a call from Wahoo and I'm going to work out, you know, I do my little thing and I'm going to work out uh, something with Wahoo. I'm going to get myself one of those kicker snaps, uh, their element computer and all the little probes and things to stick on me to see you know, if I'm alive or not. But before that, all I've done is used my phone. I haven't got into bike computers. So let's let's start with that first. We can talk about all kinds of apps and things like that, folks on the line. Um, mention some of the apps that you use so we can chat about them. But let me let me just send it out to you guys first. Do you guys use computers or do you use your phones? I had a GPS computer that went well for a long time. And then I crashed. Well, it fell out of my backpack. My bag was open. It flew out of the back of my backpack. It hit the ground. And I never got a new one because they're so friggin' expensive. Yeah, it, it's, it's like a three hundred dollar item, and it's like I love it. I like having a, a you know, now I use my phone a lot. I use the iPhone a lot in Strava, but the GPS computer is awesome because the batteries don't go as low, and it has the barometer in there, so yeah. you actually get that climbing. You're like, okay, I actually did three thousand feet. Where the iPhone, it could say any number of things of how many feet you climbed, and it's all off kind of thing. So. I, uh, I'm a cheap ass. If you if you guys haven't, hopefully by now you guys have noticed that I'm like not really. I I get new things. I get stuff frugal, frugal here and there. Yeah, but like I really like if I didn't have this channel, I'd and my bike didn't get stolen back in the you know last year, I'd still be riding that bike for sure. So the, my my purchases are always very measured. How about you guys? Go ahead, Wayne. Yeah, Wayne. Uh, Wayne, you, you you what do you use? What do you use, man? So I have the the Garmin Phoenix or Phoenix the watch, and I've been using that for the past what about two two years. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I use that is because I've got this Huawei phone that seems to just switch off during like ten minutes or twenty minutes into your ride. It just cuts out and it just kills your whole uh, the whole ride, you know, for Strava and stuff. So. I just link everything onto, I link Strava onto my Garmin, and that's it. Hey, Wayne, what time is it where you're at right now? Well, let me look on my Garmin Fenix. <laughs> oh, God. It's now, now 417. Yeah. In the AM. Yeah. He got a yeah. I'm, I'm waiting for Wayne to post a freaking Amazon affiliate thing on his. Yeah, <laughs> post my Garmin. Sponsored by Garmin. <laughs> Affiliate link. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, how about you? you? You showed something before. What 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 what, what do you use out oh. there? Because I'm seeing a lot of people saying phones and Strava, phones and Strava. I'm like, I'm seeing a lot of phones and Stravas going over here on the uh on on the yeah. on the chat thing. The phones and Strava thing is great, but back in my spandex days, like Brian said, it definitely wasn't as accurate. Mm -hmm. I, I think I spent like five hundred bucks on this yeah. Garmin oh. eight ten. And it did map and live Strava segments. And obviously, I had a power meter on my road bike and heart rate and watts per kilo. I did that whole thing. I did, I did Garmin Connect and training peaks with a coach when I did yeah. Ironman races. Wow. And it, 
it definitely was really accurate, but this thing can't take 4K video and pictures and I can't swipe right on it. You know, like right. it's it's very it's limited good. to what it does specifically. And with all of that kind of stuff, especially with the watts and the power and the coach, it turned into it, it just wasn't fun anymore. It was more right. just I, I was turning into a robot, although I was really slim yeah. and fit and mm -hmm. I, I was a robot and it just wasn't fun. Well, let, let, let me ask you guys this, and same thing for you folks that are on the air, because I'm, I'm curious about this one. Um, does it matter if we're talking mountain bike or road bike? Because a lot of these computers do turn by turn, but I'm in the woods. I'm not going to see the thing say, you know, left at the oak tree. So now, you know, let, let me propose the question back to you again. Does it make a difference if you're a mountain biker? I think it does. Okay, because so I'm going to chime in. Oh, sorry. Some of those have, so, so that like the Wahoo element actually Bluetooths to your phone. Mm -hmm. So it actually has a little bit more action to it. So you can actually see like, okay, like I want to hit a KOM on this thing, on this climb, the segment starts now. It like gives you a little warning of like where the segment's at. It actually, I think it even tells you like how you're doing while you're in the segment and stuff. So I, I dig that stuff. And I think actually like the turn by turn thing is a possibility because if you load in your maps okay. and some stuff interacts with like, like I'm saying, like your phone and I, I don't quote me on this, but I think you might have to actually download some offline offline maps or even Strava app integrates and you can actually zoom in. Like the one that Shane had is actually big enough to have a screen on it and be like, Oh, I need to go here versus there. I can't wait until we get the augmented glasses though, because then it's yeah. just a green line, right? That's the, that's the split. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you going to say, Sean? Yeah. So for me going from road biking and being a robot with this thing to mountain biking, mm -hmm. I was like, man, screw this. I just want to have fun. I'm going to go out and ride my bike in nature. I picked up like the maps at the bike shop yeah. and I went out. I was just like, I'm taking these handcuffs off. I don't want to be connected to technology. I'm, I'm in the outdoors. I, I want to be connected to the outdoors, but I kind of found that when I took those handcuffs off and I was just going by this, I, I didn't have a little bit of guidance. I didn't have yes. um, MTB project or trail forks to tell me, Hey, don't climb up this downhill. It's going to suck. And that experience being free from technology, it, it wasn't really fun either. I kind of had to blend in some MTB project and trail forks and, you know, mm -hmm. I wasn't going to throw on a heart monitor or a, or a, I think breaking free from it isn't the answer either. I think you got to have a little bit. Yeah. I've been out in the woods, like even having trail forks on your phone and having it right there right. and going down the trail a little bit, you still get lost. So it's like, it's, I, I, I like my maps. I really, really like my maps. I remember, uh, on Redemption 17, I was riding with Alexander. He's in the chat right now. And it's like he had done the ride like a couple times. And it was still like, okay, I'm going to get it off the map because we don't know what we're doing. Well, I, so here, here, here are the apps that I use and, 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 and what, what I found so far. Um, yeah, I, I, I use my Strava mainly because everyone uses Strava. It's a great way to record things. Also, it seems like everything else is connected to Strava. So if you want to use other things like Relot, Relive, um, yeah. Um, sing, single track uses it. I, I'm, I'm becoming a very big fan of trail forks. I'll tell you why in a minute, but, um, trail forks is another one. It, it just records everything. It's kind of nice. It's a nice home base. Um, I use an app called apex. I think it's, what's it called? Uh, oh, oh no. Apex. Uh, of Avenza, Avenza, A V A A V E N Z A maps. It's like a PDF map reader with where you're at. So here's, here's why I'm liking these apps. I was always the guy that would ride with his friends and um but not really pay attention of where the hell i'm going so we'd all be like hey we had a good time i'm like yeah we sure did and then we go ride the trail again and um they'd be like gene you still don't know where you're at we've on the same trail five times and you still don't know because no i don't need to know i follow you dudes but i i don't always have that so the apps have made me feel more confident now now should i be this dependent on something that has batteries maybe not but i'm telling you right now i'll ride on my i'll ride alone more now and try more things because I'm I'm more confident. So I use Strava, the um that that one, the uh Avenza maps. I'm starting to use trail forks a lot more. And um one of the reasons why I'm liking trail forks is because the maps are basically written by people that rode the trail. 
So yeah. at least I know like the other one, it's only as updated as the park updating their maps for riding. But this is if I'm going to a park, these are the trails that are there because someone rode them. Um, and the other reason why is because of of Brian, actually that 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 email that you know from from Pink Bike, uh, I talked to that dude a little bit. I think his name's Trevor. Yeah. Um, yeah. What he's doing, uh, so so Trail Forks is basically owned by Pink Bike, and what they're doing now is a suite. They're asking uh, content creators to help link up their videos to um, the trails on Trail Forks. So if you're going to go for a ride on Trail Forks and you want to see what the trails look like, they'll give you a list of the different um, videos that are in that area, so you can see where you're going to go. So. I just think technology in that respect is kind of killing it. I'm not going to lie to you. I do keep a paper map in my bag, but I get nervous pretty easy out there. Uh -huh. So even if I had it, I wouldn't know, do I go left or do I go right or how far? But I still yeah. think, I mean, you're right. I mean, there, there you go. You got yours, man. I mean, uh, so those are the apps I'm using. But yeah, go ahead. Tell, tell me, you got, you got your map there. So you use yours then, huh? Yeah, well, sometimes. I mainly use it to clean my glasses. But we got people <laughs> over here in the comments kind of going back and forth. <laughs> People going back and forth uh, about Trail Forks and MTB Project and, oh, yeah. Trail Forks is better, MTB Project is better. And for me, I mean, I mainly use Trail Forks, but I think MTB Project needs to sneak in there a little bit because they give a lot yes. better descriptions about, yeah, these are the trails, but this is how you link them all together and this is how you make a fun ride. So You're I right. think one's better than the other. They're, they're kind of one i agree they're, they're both in the same hand yeah. Well, yeah i think the best thing about them is you, you can have them all technically if you want to i mean you should really learn how to use one since it's basically telling you where the hell to go but you can have them all right definitely yeah, so mtb mtb savant i think mm -hmm. he posted a really cool video about like we all have an old cell phone like i'm streaming on my cell phone this is an old one i just download trail forks and mtb project and strava on it mm -hmm. and you don't have to have service as long as you have gps on it you can have that right right on your stem to have live mapping so you know right where you are right then if you yeah. haven't seen that go check it out mtv savant yeah and another thing is like strava has a really bad name in a lot of places like people hate it like oh my god strava strava like it's ruining the trails like when i rode with the guys in new in uh in Cape Town, they all seem to love it and, and use it, but the guys in Spain, they hate it. They think it's destroying the trails. So Why? you can actually you can actually yeah. re record your rides in Trail Forks as well. So I, I think everybody just thinks that it's destroying the trails because people are taking shortcuts and sanitizing the trail and blowing through. Like you'll you'll see like a you know this is how the trail used to run and now it runs straight through instead of going over and you know there's all these stories about people coming down the trail yelling oh strava get out of my way like which i think are kind of <laughs> silly uh, you know but, Brian, i found the same thing in europe like uh, when we were in france uh we've been there for like two years i've been there twice and it seems like the europeans they hate strava no one stravas in europe it's, it's a funny thing but yeah it's it's massive strava is a big thing here in cape town so Europeans that don't like it. Yeah, I love I don't it. Know I, love, why. I love having that access to the the history. I love being able to see like, oh, that's what how long it took. Yeah. Oh, when when did I actually do that? Sometimes you're like, oh, I did that ride last year. No, it was three years ago. It's like it's so neat to have that history. Well, I like how Strava kind of gives you the end of the year your your year of riding, and it kind of gives you this little montage of what you've done. But yeah. um, let so me ask you this: speaking. which one which one do you feel is more accurate? Do you feel the computers are more accurate? Because one of my, uh, a, a buddy, Ken, one of my subscribers, he sent me an email saying, Gene, you might want to talk about this. I do my Strava, and I'm always a mile short of my buddies that do a computer. And I'm like, I was riding right next to him. So do you think yeah. you get ripped off, or wh what do you think? I think the computer is always more accurate. It's just a purpose-built thing. Like the phone is always kind of like hacked together. It's not really a great GPS computer. It is a great GPS computer, but I would always trust the Garmin over over the phone yeah yeah and also speaking uh, of like it's, it's a funny strava. thing because like if, oh, sorry dude go ahead oh, wait, go ahead. wait you wait you go go ahead wayne <laughs> like it's a funny thing if i ride if i ride with other guys that i've got the computers mm -hmm. then our distances are all this are different as well so it does, i don't think it really matters on if you're using the cell phone or a computer, I think it's how it's tracking you. 
that specific computer that you've got on. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And I, I know that there are a lot of those people out there that hate Strava. And I kind of was one when I went from road biking to mountain biking because of like the all oh, Strava times and people being douches about it on the trail. But one thing, and I'm not super consistent about it, but one thing that's awesome that I probably will use is, you know, you can put in suspension parts in there or tires or yep. bike frames or shoes. So, you know, like, okay, I've put this many hours on the suspension time to get service, or I'm going to sell this bike. I have this many miles exactly on it it's a really good tracking thing for that kind of deal i've i've always wanted to keep that up to date and i have not i've been too lazy every single time well let's let's yeah, um, let's too. move into the next let's move into the next level of tech then so um obviously first of all folks we didn't bring up this topic because there was going to be one answer when we were done that's impossible right i mean everyone has what they like um, I think obviously the most important thing is uh, use whatever you need to use to go in the trail and make sure you come back out again. I don't care if you use smoke screens or leave breadcrumb on the trail or whatever you do. As long as you're safe and feel comfortable, then you got to go do it. Um, oh, got a super chat from Mr. Single Track Sampler. Thank you, Mr. Single Track. Thank you very much. It's always nice to see you a couple five bucks here every once in a while. Got some coffee money coming the way. Um, thank you very much. Um, you're going to split that, right, Gene? Yeah, I'm going to uh -huh. split every penny of it. Yeah. Yeah. Let me take a screenshot. I'll send you your share right now. So, um, the, uh, the, so like we said, guys, you, um, you got to use whatever makes you feel comfortable and, and, and whatever you, um, you, you like, you like to do. Uh, but I think what we're seeing is that there are multiple options and maybe some you might not have been aware of. So take, take a look at those. If you have any other apps that you think are pretty cool, let us know. I'll try to put. I'll try to look at some of this and see which ones I can put into the description. But I think most of them you guys already know about. We're just realizing that some people like certain ones better than others. But um, if we move the tech off the bike now a little bit, what do you guys use for for like training type of things? Do you do anything MLC Adventures? Thanks a lot for the super chat. Um, anything for training? What, 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 what are you guys doing? I, I, I can tell you what I'm doing in a couple minutes, but I started last time. Do you guys do any stuff for training? I'm not home enough to train, but I, uh, when I am, I like, I would love to be able to train, but I do have a, uh, cycle ops, the hammer and you know, I've used Zwift. I've used, uh, trainer road. There's suffer fest. There's so many different things. I would, that is, I think that's the funniest thing about like, me envying anyone with a actual regular schedule where it's like, okay, if I had a regular schedule, I could be like, I'm home. I'm going to train Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then yeah. I will actually get faster instead of like, I go ride for a week in Spain and then I'm back and I'm just editing for two weeks. I'm not doing anything. Like, so I, I'm not training. There's no training going on, but someday I hope so. How about so spandex? I, I, yeah, yeah, you, I knew you'd be coming. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, spandex guy. There you go. I knew you'd be saying uh, that's, something. <laughs> that's exactly what it is. I still throw on the spandex and I still get on the on the bike on the trainer. But starting like last winter, Brian, I was watching your long format Patreon videos while I was on the trainer. It was just so nice to have those thirty minute videos or even longer, forty five minute videos. To ride my bike, I could zone out physically, but still have a blast POV on the trail. And I think someone that. in the comments mentioned that too. They yeah, it's, I've heard that from quite a few people, which is so cool. Like one of my buddies, Patrick, down in Southern California, he mm -hmm. said he tries to watch movies and TV shows, and like it just doesn't quite work. But you, he could turn on a BKXC Patreon video and zone out just the right amount. And you know, you're not, you're not the only people. So, my, my my buddy, uh, my buddy Joe, same thing. He goes to the gym and gets on the elliptical. And he's like, "Yeah, this Brian guy. I watch him. and He's all over the fucking place." And I'm uh -huh. like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good, Wayne. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead. I uh, I well, I broke my collarbone recently, or oh, a little while ago, and uh, I had to get on a stationary bike, like those spinning bikes. And what I was using, I was using one of these. Uh, I don't know the exact name, but a spinning app. It just tells you, so I was doing spinning on a bicycle and it tells you when to let go and when to like hit it hard and yeah. stuff. So it's just like a timer that's busy timing. Every 10 seconds or every 30 seconds it's going like it's a beep telling you when to push it and when to slow it down, when to rest, yeah, when to push it again. And that, that was actually pretty cool. Nice. Um, so I've, I, um, I picked up, you can probably even see it. It's, it's this bike right over here. All right. I got a, a Diamondback Overdrive and I picked that up because 
I wanted to have a trainer. So um, I'm going to have the Wahoo on that. You can see the blue, the blue. Yeah, tire. the blue tire. Yeah, yeah. Um, which mm -hmm. I found is really not that much more quiet than a regular. So anyway, I was a little disappointed yeah. on that. But anyway, um, but I picked up that specifically because it has three. Uh, it has the, uh, you know, it's, it's got the multiple rings on it in the front so I can get the gear ratio yeah. that I want for for trying to, you know, build up some stuff. But I also got it because this way during the, the season, I can take it off the trainer and I can lend it to a friend. So we can go riding. I have a, I have a backup bike so I can share. But what I use is um, the the Garmin, you know, until I get the Wahoo stuff in, the Garmin cadence, speed, and heart monitor thing. And I use a little ant, little ant thing, you know, um, USB cable into my computer. And I just started getting into uh, Zwift. So I don't know what you folks are using out there, if you use that or not. Uh, usually the two I've heard the most are Zwift and Trainer Road. Yeah, uh, those are the ones I, I heard the most since I'm not really technically training for an event. I'm just training to not be such a slow, slow yeah. guy. Um, I'm just training to not be so slow. That's it. Yeah. So Zwift seems to be a good way to go for it's me. Inter it's interesting because my brother, he doesn't take training very seriously. He he does it a lot, like, but he's not training to be you know a racer or anything. He's not trying to be a pro, but he has bounced around he bounces around all the time. He's like, I like Zwift for a little while and I get bored of it. Then you go to Sufferfest, then you go to Trainer Road. So he he's very uh, non-committal, non, uh, it's kind of like me. I have no, uh, no, uh, you know, no loyalty, but he bounces around quite a lot. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. How about you guys? You, you, when, you, you, when you do a train, um, do you just train on a trainer or do you have an app you go with? I mean, I, I used to just put on a YouTube video and I use that to follow the, those guys, you know? Uh, as far as like virtually riding with people, I haven't tried it. I've done like training classes where everyone's yelling at each other and you've got someone <laughs> at the front yelling, which is always fun, but it's still nothing beats riding on the trail. And if yeah. it's 30 degrees and the trails are good, I'm, I'm out on the trails. I'm not just because it's cold. I'm not going to stay indoors. I really love the I really idea of Zwift. I really want to try to do a Zwift with like, uh, you know, people with viewers and stuff. I think it's such a great idea. Mm -hmm. It's just like got to actually try to execute it. And I haven't really executed it yet. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, I'm, 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 I'm pretty happy with it because, um, the Zwift kind of keeps you going through different roads. It looks, it looks kind of cool. And, um, yeah. you know, I, I, I kind of just keeps, keeps my mind, you know, moving along and stuff like that. Which I thought might be pretty cool. I was also kind of kicking around. Um, a lot of it came actually from some, from some of your videos, Brian, where I'm like, I'm already riding anyway. I can just take the ride and make 30 minutes of just yep. a 30 minute video. Just like literally just, just, just find some background music. So you don't have to hear, hear me huffing so much. And just, 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 just so you have something to look at while you're pedaling. I was thinking maybe I might throw out some of those videos. That might be kind of cool. Oh, totally. Like, uh, I have one video like on my channel that's like super long called like the Spanish supercut. And it's like all the best, like uncut rides from Spain, no talking. Well, it's some talking cause it's the big long and there, there's actually been a couple guys that are like, man, I've watched this like three times and like put it in the comments like that. I, I watched this on my trainer. So there's definitely a need out there for like the longer videos and they're out there. You just gotta look for them. I'll be right well, back. What, what, one of the cool things that I, I, I found out from Wahoo is that there you're able to actually go and record your, your ride and your elevation and everything in Strava. And then when you, you can put that into the computer and then, um, the, 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 the trainer will actually increase and reduce the resistance based on your ride. So you actually can redo that ride again. And they're going to have this thing that picks up the front of the bike to almost make you feel like you're, you're really, you know, I mean, we're, we do rock. mountain biking, so you're not going to go over a rock, but you know what I'm saying, Wayne? Yeah. No, no, no that's crazy. Um, there, uh, there, there's a couple of guys that I know that ride on the cycle ops thing. And it's like, you actually remove your back wheel and it's got a cassette on the machine. And the same thing, it like uh, it adds a resistance while you're watching the video, and it's got all that stuff, but it doesn't have that bouncing around thing yet. So maybe they'll get to that later on in future. You know, maybe you'll get closer to riding on the trail. But mm -hmm. 
I don't dress of the trainer stuff because we we lucky here in South Africa. We've got pretty much year round riding. Like uh, our winters are just a bit wet, mm -hmm. so I just go out and I ride as much as possible outside. So I I prefer to do that than sit on a trainer. So I hardly I'm hardly on a trainer. Well, that's that I thought was kind of cool. Um, of course, you know, I, I I hooked up with these guys when our season's kind of halfway almost through the winter type of thing, but it, I'll still be, you know, using it throughout. So I'll be pretty excited to just kind of get something a little bit more, more, more regiment and kind of go through that. But um, so that that that's that's a, that's a that's a world of tech. Now let's go into a different world of tech. Let's talk about tech on the bike. So let's talk about um, let's talk about electric shifters. Let's talk about shock whiz. Let's talk about what do you think's coming next? You know, let, 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 let's, let's throw that out there now because we're getting pretty close to the point where the bike can almost sense how you're pedaling and how you're feeling and then adjust the suspension of the bike. We're getting close to what it needs to be. So thoughts on that one. I'm seeing a lot of head bobbing. So a lot of people have been thought about this before. Yeah, all that stuff really, really... It's funny, like Jonathan Lee on the MTB podcast, he always talks about like, man, we're still using derailers. It's like, that. this is such antiquated technology. So it's nice to actually see that eventually, hopefully, like we're getting there. But uh, everyone changed the standards. Like, oh, 29 wheels, oh, carbon wheels, oh, what a carbon frame, oh, this, this boost spacing. Like, so it's like every every step of progress that the bike industry makes, it's just like people get mad at them for doing it. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, the, the shock whiz you brought up and it's like, I was disappointed in the shock whiz because I put it on there. I'm such a suspension noob. And I was like, okay, here we go. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was like, yeah, you're good. And it's like, I put it on several times and it was I like, know. yep, yep. You've got it dialed in. And I'm like, I'm a freaking idiot with this stuff. And I've got it dialed in. Like, ugh, that was a waste of $300. I was, I was a little surprised <laughs> as well. Cause, um, uh, I, 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 what I found from the shock was, and Brian Vaughn kind of said, this. I, I got, I got to send this sh shout out to, to Jacker MB because he's been a great subscriber and he keeps on saying stuff over here. And if I don't say his name, I think he's going to go and break his keyboard because he keeps <laughs> on, but, come on, Gene, I dare you say my name. So I said your name. There you go. All right. There we go. Jake really, really nice. Jake. But, um, but Brian Vaughn, uh, was doing a review on it and what I, what we both found is it's actually, I wouldn't say it's as much a noob thing. I think it's more for the guy that really wants to dial it in and learn about all the different things. Because when I found it helped me the most was when I thoroughly messed up my suspension and I knew it was wrong and uh -huh. let it figure out what was wrong. And then I slowly dialed it back in uh -huh. from that. Um, but yeah, I mean, honestly, for a brand new person that doesn't know anything about suspension, if you go with the 20% sag rule for the most part for the front and the back, you're going to be pretty darn close, you know? Um, so I, I really wanted to love it and I do like it a lot if I want to get into it, but I, I don't think for the purpose, what I also don't think that a lot of people say, oh, we could just go to your bike shop and rent it. You can't get a day out of it and really know enough. I think anyway, you know. I think I think bike shops should actually give it to the guys that they sell the bikes to because, like, when you buy a bike, it's always that mission of setting your suspension up. If if you don't know anything about suspension, then it's always a mission. So, I think it's like a bike shop should invest in a few and then just set the bikes up for the customers. Maybe give them a bit more aftermarket service, like just set the bikes up, set the suspension up properly for them. I used the shock with, but I found it was giving me like like I know how I want to run my suspension and just wanted the compression too like low. It wanted it too soft for what I like. You know, I like it a little bit firmer than than what um, the shock was was saying. I must I must be so. You know, it's a great it's a great thing for for like like what Brian said. It's good for if you're just right. trying to figure out what your suspension should feel like. But if you know what you want out of suspension, you can easily dial it in on your own. Yeah, yeah, I I I, I kind of think so. 
And, uh, and and guys, you know, I'm seeing some posts over here. I'm throwing 20 percent out because I thought that was one of the numbers on there. But I think, you know, it's 15 in the rear, maybe 20 in the front, wh whatever. You should be going by your recommended your settings by the manufacturer of, of the bike. So I, maybe I should have said it that way. Um, but at the end of the day, um, one thing that I do have to say the shock whiz did try to show me was that uh, more more tokens, less air. Um, mm -hmm. so if you're not familiar with what a token will do for your, for your front and rear, uh, suspension, you know, fork or shock, uh, if you put that token inside one of those, uh, yeah, the volume spacers, there you go. Um, the more you have, the quicker your, 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 your suspension is going to ramp up and, and stop you from, from, from kind of crushing down. And it allows you to take a bigger hit, but it allows you to run less air. So your lower bumps, it's more supple because you don't have that much air in there. So the little bumps, you're kind of like kind of it's like kind of like bubbling over them. But then you've got the suspension to ramp up fast. So if you hit something hard, uh, it, it'll it'll compensate for that. And I don't think I would have tried as many tokens and run my pressure so low if the shock whiz didn't give it a try. And I do. I'm seeing a lot of people post the uh, MRP ramp control. Um, didn't, didn't trail features do a review on that guys. I think, I think he did and he did a really good job on that. I hope that's the right, right. Didn't, didn't trail features do a review on the MRP, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, yeah. I, yeah. I thought, I thought he did. Yeah. Another thing with the shock was, it... sorry, Shane, you can go. Shane's on the, Shane's on the mic. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead James. So, some, some, someone had to talk to you. you, you rock, paper, scissors. Another another thing with the with the uh, shock was is that um, ninety percent of the suspension out there you can't tune in your high high speed compression anyway, you know. So it's going to tell you to uh, to change some or to set some stuff like on your fork and whatever. Ninety percent of the suspension out there you can't. You're going to have to shim it or you're going to have to change it internally. That's just a it's just a little bit of a waste. Mm -hmm. Getting it using it so um yeah it's like it, it's fine for setting up because the majority of the bikes that get sold have only got what like rebound setting at the rear and uh like a rebound setting in the front and that's about it and if you've got like a pike rsc rsc t3 then you've got low speed compression but the rest of it you can't set up you have to do it internally so True. you know it, the shock was is great if with the with the very expensive suspension uh, the shocks and forks if you can't set high speed low speed compression high speed rebound and low speed rebound but for majority of the suspensions out there it's like you know a lot of you can't set. Interesting, interesting. Um, now the bike that I'm going to be getting, and I'll just leave it at that because that, that it opens me up for like the you know ooh the, was that called foreshadowing on what's happening. Um, but, um, that one's going to have, uh, I think I'm going to go with a, a coil, a coil spring for that one, because they're making them so much lighter now. And the technology is so much better that, um, for what I want to do with the bike, I, I want to have that. They're, they're very, they're very, they're great for the low bumps. Um, and obviously you've got that spring to take up the, the, the heavy hits. So, um, uh, there's not much adjusting for for a, a shock whiz with that, but you know that's that's where I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna probably go back go back and go to a uh, uh, um, uh, spring again, you know. Yeah. No, I think that's awesome, and I mean, as far as like tech on the bike and innovation, mm -hmm. there's always gonna be this next new thing. There's always gonna be the geeks that want electronic shifting, even though I'd probably crash it out the first ride. <laughs> break break that 400 rear derailleur off <laughs> but um i i kind of like the tech like what you're talking about like i just happen to be wearing an mrp shirt right now but i'm a big fan of that because if you really like to geek out on suspension you can really get in there i mean and the, the ramp control kind of acts as a high speed compression as well i actually will be putting a the mrp ribbon air on a hard talent building up and then on my full suspension that's coming i'm putting the mrp ribbon coil which is really cool because yeah, you're saying there's not a lot of adjustment in a coil fork, but with the MRP coil, I mean, you've got the low speed compression, you've got, 
you've got the uh, high speed compression in the ramp control. They've, they've managed to put ramp control with the ambient air in that coil fork. So yes, innovation, cool, but I, I mean, to each his own. Well, um, X shifter, X shifter, they just came out with a, um, an electric shifter mod. So oh. what, yeah, what that does is it, um, um, you attach the shifter to your chain stay, the device anyway, and it attaches to the coil to, to your, to your, to your cable. And then you have a shifter that's up on the handlebar, which is sends the signal to the shift and it, it's, it's electric shifting. But what it's basically doing is it's basically, it's a, it's, a, it's a solenoid inside of this thing, you know, pulling the cable and you can have it do multiple things. You can also have it do your, like if you had a front derailleur, you could do that. You can actually have it do your seat post if you had a cable for that. So um, they're trying to bring in electric to the bikes you already have. So it's interesting. I'm, I, I, I'm, you know, I'm in talks with them to try to figure out if I can, you know, show some of that stuff off. Um, I don't know if it's because, like, you know, Jane, you just brought up something. You know, that's a lot of money to convert everything over to electric. You can use what you have now. Um, is there an advantage doing that? I don't really know yet. I, I don't know if it's any better than um, than what we already have. But it's called X Shifter. And um, I look, think with X Shifter, cool. you can actually run a 11 speed rear derailleur, yeah. and it will make it act like a 12 speed rear derailleur. Really? Yeah. And second of all, what's a front derailleur, Gene? I, yeah, I, I know, I know. It's it's, it's that's actually <laughs> that's it's another name for a boat anchor. I think. Yeah, I know. Okay. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah, don't go buying stock in that. Hey, um, um, we got a couple minutes left over here, and some folks wanted us to talk about lights. That's another uh, electronic doomahickey that we all, uh, some of us use. Because um, over here on the, on the East Coast, I mean, it's only starting. Well, December is when we get back. Uh, that's that's the, the 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 shortest day, and we start going the other way. It's like a minute. It's a minute. It's a minute. Um, um, I like I like I like getting lights. You know, I mean, it's kind of fun. Night rides are a lot of fun. We're squeezing them in now. Now the weather's starting to get a little bit warmer. Um, there's like a ton of different lights. What I like to do is I like to have one on the bar and I have one on the helmet. This way I can, I can, you know, cause having the bar is only good as wherever your handlebars are, but I like to be able to see where I'm going and then turn. So yeah. that, that's my combo. Um, what, what do you guys, what do you guys use? I use uh, one on the head because you've got to look through the corners, obviously. And uh, I've got one of these triple ones. I've got a magic shine. That's like three beams, and then it's got, uh, it's got the the main beam which I leave off, and then the two side beams. Those those, those I keep on because that's got a, a very wide spread, mm -hmm. so it it doesn't leave those. I find that those single ones that leave like a blind spot. They when they're so bright, they leave like a blind spot on the trail, and you can't really make out like what that is. You know, it's just like a it's too bright, and it's just makes it just wipes out that section so similar one a wide uh, a wide angled one and then one on the head just to look through the corners yeah i have a sigma buster so i have the the helmet light and the and the uh the handlebar light and the thing is i don't get to go ride very often when i'm riding i'm filming so when i'm riding i'm working boohoo poor me but uh so the one ride i did at night and i tried to film the, the video didn't come out really good but the night riding was really cool. And it was it. at Rockville and Fairfield, which is basically illegal everywhere to ride at night here. So there's not really that many places to ride at night, but it was so cool to ride these trails that I've ridden a lot and had no, but you get that tunnel feeling where it's like, even though it's wide open, you still feel like you're in a tunnel, which is right. fun as hell. Now, I, 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 got, I got something I'm gonna throw at you, which you would totally think would not be the case but when I, I did a little vlog on night riding and what you guys think about it and, and, and uh, everyone gave all the different lights. It was really nice of them. It was a great, great conversation, but there was also a unanimous um, post trend. I was finding people were all saying that they ride faster at night and yeah. you ride slower, but you know what, Brian, your tunnel vision, like you said, you're not, the hills you go up faster why for me anyway because since i can't see the top i don't have your a brain yeah. your brain doesn't have to process all that you got it you just go you don't think oh i'm so tired i have to go all the way up the hill you just so sometimes it makes me realize gene you know what um sometimes it's just f freaking mental like if you just get past this so i i ride 
uh, faster at night. Cause the other thing too, is uh, all of a sudden, you know, you realize that maybe you're not as bad a mountain, mountain biker as you might think. Like, I think I suck most of the time, but all of a sudden you're literally relying on whatever's inside of here. Cause you can't see anything. It just has to be quick. And, um, dude, uh, my times were definitely better. And, and I wasn't the only one saying that. What do you guys think? Well, and the trails are different at yeah. nighttime, right? Would you say so? It's no, totally. like riding, even though you might have ridden it 20 times, it's a completely mm -hmm. new, different trail. Yep. And a shout out to James at JF Ride. He just gave us his lunch money. Oh, <laughs> thanks, man. Oh, I missed, um, I missed the super chat. Oh, JF Rides. I'm so sorry. Hey, Jeff, JF Rides, thank you so much for the super chat. Thanks, man. Yeah, I, I, I didn't awesome. see that one. But one thing with uh, with those lights, I say it's spring for the good ones because I've gotten the ones on Amazon. And when you're charging those battery packs, I've had them melt carpet. <laughs> they, they, they overheat. So I, I definitely, I mean, Brian, whatever one you had, the Sigma, I, I would spend some good money on night riding lights. Yeah. The, the only problem I've had with buying the cheaper lights is that the battery generally doesn't last that long. I don't mean like riding, like life expectancy. The next year, it's kind of eh, eh third year you're kind of like bringing an extra battery and some double a's and maybe a flashlight you know because you're like shit this isn't gonna last much longer so um that that that's and then your house burns down yeah <laughs> they, 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 if you try to jinx me dude but um <laughs> you know i uh i have to say that uh i'll probably invest in maybe something a little bit different but um i i do think that night riding is a completely different animal let's talk about animals for a minute I will be the first one to say that the smallest bunny rabbit sounds like the biggest bear at night. At night, at night, yeah. <laughs> right. Obviously, yeah. you're like, <laughs> you're like right? you're scared out of your fucking mind. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, I've been camping many a time and just sitting in my tent and it's like, it, it's probably just a stupid raccoon or something, but it's like, what the heck is out there? Yeah, it's it's, it's freaky. I mean, uh, um. So I, 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 I we're, we're, we're barren, barren souls over here. Um, I had one time I was riding with my buddies and my bike got messed up and it was night. And, um, I was like borderline almost in tears because I'm like, <laughs> what is that guy? Did you hear that too? They're like, Oh Gene, give it a break. I'm like, no, I heard something. I really did. And I'm like, Oh, you know, cause my bike was the one that was broken. They could all just leave me there to die if they wanted to, you know, uh, <laughs> no front brakes posts a bunny in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> The coyotes do come out. Oh. Coyotes come out, yeah. Uh, remember, well, okay, remember, so you don't have to be the fastest night, rider. Night. You have to be faster than the slowest. Go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> we don't we don't get much uh, wildlife here where I stay. It's mostly um, criminals, so we get bike jacked. Like there's serious, like it's quite a big problem here. The guys actually bike jack you for your bikes, uh, so they'll jump out the bushes and and like hit you over the head with a log and then jack your bike. So really, alone at night here is a big no-no. Can't do it. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Hey folks, make sure you give us. They even do it. In, they even do it in the day. So if you go ride like road riders, they'll go ride out uh, like on on the road and they'll get thrown with a brick on their head and bike jack. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> it's a great place. Damn. <laughs> And Brian, didn't you go visit him? What the hell did you go do he that for? He's, what, he's, what, he's, he's trying to keep everyone out. What the hell? <laughs> Dude, you guys are screwed up. <laughs> hey, no, one, no, one, I would, no one hits each other. for The most that happens is, and I'm going to say, because everyone was picking on me before, yeah, I like, don't own one, maybe will, rode an e-bike once over at Way Way Onto State Park, and this one guy was like, oh, Gene, Gene, the e-bike machine. I'm like, <laughs> are, you, are you kidding me, dude? <laughs> Oh my God. Actually, I was riding my fat bike and he should have been able to tell that because I was like, <gasps> <gasps> but I mean, like, anyway, like, but, but, so we might pick on somebody. We're not going to slam him over the head with a freaking brick and still, but even if you hit him over the head with a brick, what are you going to do with this bike? You got to run out of the woods with the bike. <laughs> they ride away with it. I don't, I don't know what they do. That, that's the thing. We don't know where those bikes go. I don't know if they break them up and sell them as fares or wow. what they do with it. You know, it's like, well, I've been getting some good deals on eBay for parts, so I'm sorry <laughs> about that, dude. Sorry about your head, but 
ride rate review sticker on my new bike. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> hey, folks, do me a favor. While you're listening to us uh, joke and have some fun over here, smash that thumbs up button. Um, the more you hit the thumbs up button, the more YouTube will promote this video. Um, and what that does is obviously promotes, you know, the whole cause over here. More people will see this and they'll see Brian's channel and Ride Rate Reviews channel and the Crashing Dad's channel and uh, hopefully my channel as well, Regular Guy Mountain Biking. And uh, we get more people to figure out what we're doing and stuff like that. It'll be going pretty cool. And we've also got this thing on iTunes. So if yes. you're listening, if you happen to be listening on iTunes, you could write a review, do a five star review. Yep. You know, that helps on iTunes. And, you know, the mountain biking landscape on uh, podcasts is, is still a little thin. There's only a couple that I've really heard of and listened to. So, hey, we're going to try to try to blaze a little trail here. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. In fact, Jordan, Jordan's the one that uh, does a lot of work. Jordan will take the audio out of this and um, try to make me sound a little more manly and <laughs> clean it up. And he posts it up as a podcast for us. So definitely go over to the podcast um that'll be that'll be pretty cool um real quick um uh, trail features jordan you guys um do we have an idea of who's doing the show next week i thought the lone ranger had an idea or i don't know if alex was doing something i want to promote next week's show and we're just about at the time so i'm going to ask you guys now maybe you can put it in this in the slack over here to let me know um right because i want to try to promote the next show check the facebook we'll check the facebook we don't have to put anybody on the spot right now that's a good point but we're doing we're doing we're doing we're doing pretty good guys like to talk to tech and everything like that we got a lot of good people showing over here um we had a, a, over 100 people i think at one point that's not that's not too shabby man that's not too shabby at all a lot of very generous people with the super chat you guys are all so kind and awesome i love it man good so, stuff uh, another little bit of tech i, oh, I don't well, know man, maybe it's worth bringing tech. up but I mean, mountain biking is not safe, or it can it can be very dangerous, even riding at night or riding during the day, whatever. Does anyone else use kind of like a, a, a beacon? I know Strava has a beacon, Garmin has a beacon. Uh, I use an app called Life360, so like if I'm dead on the trail, my wife can pinpoint exactly where I am via GPS. Does anyone use something like that? Ryan, you were doing some stuff with that, weren't you? Or Wayne, you have something? Yeah, I have it. Yeah, uh, I use uh, something. Sorry, Brian, go ahead. <laughs> go for it, Wayne. So I used a I use an app called MySOS. It's a local app and it's like a safety thing. So if you fall, you just press what you want. If you want paramedics, you want uh, police, you just call whoever you want. It will send out a beacon, like a GPS coordinates, and it'll automatically send a signal. And if you don't reply to it in like 20 seconds, then they will automatically come to your pinpointed position. Oh, nice. Yeah, I've got a, a Garmin inReach Explorer. And uh, basically, I pay for like 200 bucks a year. And it's like a crazy, uh, it's like kind of a crazy plan that like I've got a million dollars worth of like rescue coverage anywhere in the world. And they'll send, a, you know, they'll send help. And, uh, and that's kind of, and I can also do a map and my parents can watch me from home and all that stuff. And, uh, like, like when I was in Spain, I had like the live mapping going, but the, uh, the thing's kind of a piece of crap because it constantly <laughs> leaks battery. Like it constantly turns itself on. So all of a sudden it's like, you need it and it has no battery. Like it's, it's actually garbage. Like it, if it's a life saving device and it's like turning itself on and then you got no battery, like it's, it's it's either going to save my life one day or cost me my life one day. Wow, that's scary. Um, the uh, uh, now look, I, I know I'm saying Wahoo a lot. I don't want you guys to think I'm trying to be a you know a Wahoo spam boy over here. I'm going to be doing some good things with them, and but uh, but it happens to be applicable to the things we're talking about. Um, the element apparently does the you can let people know where you're at. And it also, like if one of you guys were using it, I could see you on the map while we were riding. So one of the yeah. things I might do with it is when I do my meetup rides, um, one of the riders in the front, we'd be getting like five to 10, even more people on these meetup rides. We just did one on Saturday. It was freaking awesome over at Sterling Forest. Uh, big shout out to the guys that went on that ride. Jordan was at that ride. Jordan, thank you for showing up. Jordan brings, Jordan's the kind of guy that brings a knife to a gunfight. We're riding in the woods. It's the winter. It's snow. And he brings his little skinny tire bike. I mean, he he, he, he rocked it. But I mean, I'm like, you got a fat bike. But anyway, Jordan. But um, that that 
little computer will tell you where you're at on the map so I can see where the riders are. But it's supposed to send a beacon back to uh, let people know what's going on. Yeah. But I think it's, I think it's a good idea. There's a couple other ones that little devices that are coming out like that that are pretty pretty interesting. That 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 could that can that can save your butt. I mean, we're uh, mountain biking is only getting more and more popular. So um, the only thing that gets scary is the point that you made, Brian. That at some point we are relying maybe more on these devices than we should. So like like before when I was a kid, you know, I took my backpack with me. I threw a banana in there, so I had lunch, and I went and rode my bike. But now I've got my phone, my this. Now, uh oh, I got so many devices, I have to bring an extra battery charger to make sure I have backup power for my phone because I can't read a freaking map because I failed Boy Scouts. You know, yeah. so it's like at some point, you know, did we go too far with this tech or are we just we just having fun? I, you know, I don't, I don't really know. But how did, how did anyone ever survive without, you know, having a cell phone? And actually, you know, when I was a kid, I'm actually old enough to be like, you had to call people, like, okay, okay, we're going to meet up here at this time. And you, that was it. It's like, okay, they didn't show up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Who knows what happened? Yeah, yeah. Hope they got home, <laughs> I guess. Hope they didn't get hit with a brick and have their bike stolen. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so, guys, how did had, had we, we do tonight? We're a little bit past the hour, but we started a little bit little bit late. I mean, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not rushing anything. Any other thing, anything you else wanted to talk about over here when it comes to tech or something like that? Or did we do a good job? Well, actually, I already think we did a good job, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not pushing the stop button. I just want to get you guys, uh, how do you guys think we're doing? How do you guys think we're doing over on the chat? Did we miss anything? I mean, some people are saying, talking about cameras. That's a whole. We could go on forever for GoPro. Yeah. That'll that'll take. That's a whole other thing. But uh, yeah. what do you guys think? I thought it was great. They I think it's great. I think we're good. I think we're good. All right. So, um, real quick, folks, remember um, the Off Camber Live Show is put together by some really good YouTube channels. I think really great YouTube channels. We're all here to support each other. Um, tonight, uh, my name's Gene Arnold from Regular Guy Mountain Biking. It was a pleasure to host the show this evening. Um, we have a community of, of YouTube channels that take turns hosting the show. I'm pretty sure I checked on the Slack. I'm pretty sure um, Trail Features is going to be hosting next week. But like Brian mentioned, we have a Facebook page. Uh, just go to Facebook and type in the Off Camber Live Show or Off Camber. It'll come up. And we're posting all the events right there. So you'll see who's hosting it, what the topic is, who's going to be speaking um you know on on the show and, and stuff like that and obviously you know i'll have links to the other channels that were here so brian's channel ride rate reviews channel the crashing dad it would be you know it would mean the world to all of us if we all kind of went around and uh you know you subscribe to the channels if, if you like them right i mean you know it's, i don't want to tell you what to do but if you would that would be awesome check out some of the footage i'm sure you'll like it because we're all doing a good job um that's all we got. Hey, oh, MLC Adventures, thanks a lot for the super chat. I, I missed the other one. I felt really bad about that. I'm sorry. I, mean, I, I sent the message to that to that to that guy hooked us up because that was very nice of him. But I think you guys are um, you guys are freaking awesome, and we had a great time tonight. I love this. This is going to be on on the uh, the the inst what is it the iTunes and everything. Hell yeah! <laughs> all right. Well, no, the interweb. The interweb. Cheers. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. Here we go. Cheers. I got my my water bottle. Yeah. All right, yay. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a crazy guy. All right, guys, that's going to do it for tonight. Um, you guys are all awesome. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll catch you later on. Um, be good, folks. Have a good I'll night. see you on the trail. Any other taglines? Party on the pedals? What are you guys going to say? Good night. <laughs> <laughs> Take it easy, folks. Bye-bye.